There's only you're your Dylan's. <laughs> <laughs> See, I should give mine to Dylan because he's just sad today. Yeah. Since the Ravens lost to the Steelers, did we mention that the Ravens lost to the Steelers? No, no. Let's we, mention. We had talked it about that. <laughs> we had talked about that. Uh, Lisa Henry from the Backpack Program. She was here last week as part of uh, a different role with the WVEA. But this is Backpack Program time. When do you pack uh, the bags, or have you done some of it already for Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving bags are already done. Actually, done and gone. Uh, not gone. Um, they're going to be delivered to the schools on. Uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. So for Thanksgiving, because the kids have off all week now, um, and they've been doing that for the past couple years, that we want to make sure we're sending home as much food as possible that mm -hmm. we can. And so the past couple years, we do the same as we do for a winter break and spring break. We send home two large bags of non-perishable food with the children. And we deliver those early to make sure, especially for the younger kids, that um, the teachers are maybe able to send one bag home at a time, uh, give the schools plenty of time to send those food bags home for Thanksgiving break. So uh, types of food that will be in those bags, um, we have non all non-perishable items, so mm -hmm. canned soup, canned pastas, mac and cheese. Uh, we have tuna. Uh, we have different kinds of fruit cups, dried fruit, cereal, and individual snacks like nuts, granola bars, crackers, cookies. And um, that should help get the kids through the week and get them back to school for it will be December already. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be gearing up for winter break. And when do you begin to pack the bags for the winter break and when do you distribute those? So those will be distributed uh, the week before school's out. Um, school um, ends on a Friday. So we'll probably do something similar, uh, deliver them on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. And they will be packed the week before. So um, we it takes months of prep, making sure we have enough food, because this is significantly a lot more food than our typical weekend bags. Mm -hmm. um, weekend bags are for two days and so this is um, about 10 days with the weekends so um, it's a lot of food to purchase get in our facility get organized and then to bag up as well in addition to doing our usual weekend bags so um, our volunteers have been very busy there friday Which, december 20th bill is the yeah. final day of school before yeah. christmas break by the way or yeah. winter break they call it so they don't offend anyone go ahead <laughs> yeah lisa how would a uh, someone from the community get involved uh, by volunteering by making a contribution by bringing in food how would you how can they best so, uh, help you and support you well, all those suggestions are oh, wonderful, yeah. Bill. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have our volunteers. Um, we have some groups coming in in December. Those are already scheduled. But if you are interested in bringing in a group, or maybe it's just uh, you and a coworker, someone from your church, you can um, just reach out and contact us through our Facebook page or our website um, has our email address. So does Facebook as well and Instagram. And we can get you on our list and see when your availability is. Of course, money is always needed, especially for uh, winter break. Again, we have um, two large bags for Thanksgiving break. Going to do the same for winter break. So November and December are our most expensive months. In addition, in December, the past might be about 10 years now it's been a while that we have done we call that our our christmas project and what we do is offer families to come to us to pick up boxes of family food and also um, household items the household items are especially um, very much appreciated by families so these household items are um, hygiene items shampoo conditioner toothbrushes deodorant um, lotion band-aids um, cleaning supplies like laundry detergent, cleaning solution, and then we also have paper products, um, toilet paper, paper towels. So these are all necessities that any family needs, but SNAP dollars cannot be used to purchase these items, even though they are necessities. So SNAP can only be used for food. So um, these boxes are a favorite, and we have made them um, contain um more than we have in the past and also um we do our best to make sure it is um 
high quality things that we would want to buy ourselves. So for example, um, we use our buying power wanting to buy in bulk. So for example, um, we will buy trash bags at Sam's Club. And they come, you know, in a huge, I don't know, 200 mm -hmm. box pack. It's humongous. I wish we could give every family one of those, but that's the very expensive unless uh, we get some more donations in. But we have volunteers who will then take those boxes and roll them into a 50 count and put them in for families. So they're getting the good quality Sam's Club trash bags, um, you know, instead of dollar store, which, you know, just are a little more um, thick and stable. So we're able to do things like that. You wouldn't think of trash bags as something that families would need to have donated. But they do. Yeah, it's just we one of use them that, every day. Yeah, it's not yeah. on your radar, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And we are still looking for donations for those Christmas boxes. So if you go on to our Facebook um, site, you'll see a sign up, Jeannie. And we are looking for items such as family size shampoo and conditioner, lotion. I think we still have cleaning solution. Really, we can take anything, but those are the focused items that we're still um, looking to collect when we put those boxes together. Then the families who signed up, they will come to our facility and do um, like a drive-through at our facility at Boxcroft. And we will um, put those items in their car. And it's just an extra help for the holidays. But it's, it's better to donate money because you guys get, you have more buying power because you can buy in bulk. And I presume you don't pay sales tax? Correct. Right. That's as well. Good point. Yep. So um, food, does not have sales tax in, tax in West Virginia, but um, garbage those bags garbage do. bags do. So that's yeah. an excellent point that, yes, um, we are we can get them without paying for the sales tax as well. So just means you can buy more things. It's a volume thing, Lisa. If yep. you talk 10 hours a week, you're going to have one good point a week that you make. And that was mine. So if it's Monday, I'm pretty much done for the week on that. I appreciate you using that for this segment. I spent it early, right? I'm not going home with any money this week, Bill. Yeah. The other thing is from the individuals, uh, you can do a tax deduction for nonprofit donations. We are a 501c3. Yeah. But, but if you go to the grocery store and buy the garbage bags, you do not get the same tax deduction. I am not an accountant, but um, I, you might be able to. That would be a CPA question. Yeah. So if you have the receipt and the yeah. items, um, we do take those in-kind yeah. donations as yeah. well. But as always, check yeah. with your uh, CPA. Yeah. You say that in the run-up to the, the people are getting two large bags of non-perishable food items and the cans, and that's really heavy stuff. That, so it's called a backpack program. I'm assuming it's not really a backpack. Correct. So what we do is uh, put the bags of food in like Walmart, Martin shopping bags. We double bag them to make it uh, more secure and also gives a little privacy that they're not see-through. And um, the kids... Those bags are put in the kids' backpacks. So it is very much a balancing act. We want to make sure we're giving as much as we can, but making sure the bags aren't too heavy for those little ones and that they will fit in backpacks as well. And is it sized for the entire family or is it sized for the, the one child? So the food bags are, are for one child and um, any child in the school system, so siblings will get each their own at their mm -hmm. own schools. And um, for, so we don't do um, a Thanksgiving meal for Thanksgiving. We keep ours for December. And that's where we do, um, we talked about the household items. We also do two food boxes and that is more family type food. So things you could make a meal, again, it's all non-perishable, but it will be um, breakfast through dinner. So I think we're doing, um, of course, the uh, peanut butter and jelly as always and um, spaghetti sauce we have canned chicken canned vegetables gravy um, stuffing box potatoes um, as much as we've been collecting this for over six months now so when we see good prices on thing we'll buy them in bulk and save them for this uh, Christmas project so you, the families can use these items to make a family meal and also some extras like the peanut butter and jelly, pancake mix syrup, those kinds of things to help over winter break as well. So there's two means of distribution, one for the uh, ch child's backpack mm -hmm. and the second one is with family distribution. Correct, yeah. um, because we can't, um, schools don't have rooms to store that many boxes, and um, so we have the families come to us and because kids couldn't carry them home as well. Or, 
Go ahead, John. Sorry. How do you become aware of which children need this, and then how do you communicate that to the schools? And or does it go the other way? It's the other way around. So the schools are an integral part of this program. We could not do what we do without them. They are the ones who know the students and identify the students that have a need. It could be um, somebody heard of our program and they approached the school, but more of the case is that the school knows which families could possibly use our services and they'll send a sign up home form. And for the extra Christmas boxes, what we do is we send the flyer home in the food bags because we do not have names or contact information for the, for the students. It's all confidential, kept with the schools. We'll send a form home and it has a QR code or a website or they can call to get the link to sign up. And if they're signed up, they're guaranteed the food boxes. So it's not a first come, first serve type thing. And we have the family sign up so we know who's coming and know and make sure we have enough boxes for everybody. And there seem to be a lot of children, more now than when I was growing up, with allergies of various things. Mm -hmm. Is that accounted for as well? Yes, absolutely. So, yep, yeah, um, we've just noticed in the past 10 years that there has been an increase. And I'm going to think it probably was always there, but there's probably more awareness right now. I'm not sure, but we have at least 25 students that we prepare special bags or, or allergy bags or fruit it could be a food intolerance as well. Mm -hmm. If there are any serious allergies that could lead to anaphylactic shock, Berkeley County Schools Nutrition Department prepares those bags. So if there's a serious peanut allergy or something like that, um, they have their registered dietitian prepare those bags and deliver it to the school. Um, we'll get ones that are more um, lactose intolerance, um, maybe food dye. Um, we have the less serious nut allergies. We also have some bags for, um, do some special bags for um, religious reasons as well. So you have some um, families due to religion might not um, eat certain meat or eat meat at all. And we're able to make those special bags as well because we want to make sure the food we're giving to the kids can be eaten. Yeah, Lisa, you mentioned something that I had not really thought about. Or John mentioned the allergies. Uh, what financial liabilities backpack have if for some reason some some kid got sick are you subject to being sued and if you are what protection do you have um west virginia has a good samaritan law so we are um, working as a nonprofit, providing these services for free so we do not have liability on that front but we do our best to check everything we have a sticker on the bag to ask parents to check it as well and we've we've never had an issue i mean parents um they're aware of their, what their children can and can't eat when they're young. And then as the kids get older, um, they're good about taking responsibility for themselves and knowing as well. So we have not had, not had an issue, and I, I hope it definitely stays that way. And um, so we try to be as careful as possible. So, just, just remember, she's a trained killer corporate attorney, Bill. <laughs> She's cold. Yeah, you can tell just by looking at her, and I get kind of shivers running down my spine. I said, man, I hate to be in court with Lisa. She's undefeated. Yeah. She's never lost a case. You don't want to take her on. I'm telling you right because now. Because I've never been in a courtroom. So, I'm, yep, I'm undefeated. Undefeated. Just go with undefeated. Don't don't uh, d chip away at the legend. Right, right? Lisa Henry is our guest here from the Backpack Program. They've uh, just completed their run of uh, Thanksgiving bags that they've assembled for the kids. Those will be distributed soon. And then the next project is the winter break bags that will go out, two bags of food. and also How many total bags were there? 700. 700. Wow. Times two? Mm -hmm. Times two. So to the answer to your question is 1,400. You did that math all by yourself. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm like Johnny Mnemonic. I can do numbers in my yeah. head. Give me another one. 700 <laughs> times one. 700. Just knocking them out today. Knocking them out. Uh, how, no one gets paid at the backpack program, correct? Correct. Because 100% of the money that you donate gets put into the food for the kids. Right. I mean, we do have some um, overhead such as... Um, we get very low rent at our facility. Right. That building at 300 Foxcroft is owned by um, the Berkeley County Development Authority. Um, prior to that, it was owned, I don't know, some developer out in Gaithersburg. Um, gave us a little bit of a break, but not much. Um, Berkeley County Development Authority, I mean, we're really just paying for the electric water we use. Very low rent for a humongous um, facility in the basement there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that that's part of our um, overhead. Of course, we have postage 
there's a few state filings we have to do with the Secretary of State. Um, we have a cell phone, so we try to get absolutely everything for free. Um, we have an amazing, um, ours lawyer in Lewis has been doing our books pro bono for since the beginning, really. I mean, that's thousands of dollars worth of work that they do. And that's something that we are not experts in. They do that for us, do our tax returns so we can focus on the kids and make sure we are accounting for every cent mm -hmm. that we use. So th that's, um, we, there's so many different businesses that um, help us when we are in need. Um, Rubbermaid down in Winchester donated um, big plastic or those huge bins that we use. Um, we try to get everything donated that we can so as much money as possible can go to the food. You have been with this program for, what, 12 years? Uh, going on 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Are there any volunteers that have been around as long as you? I think I'm the oldest. Our founder, she, um, so I, I got involved about six months after it was started, so I'm almost from the very beginning. Our founder, um, she has moved to Morgantown, but she is still on the board of directors, so mm -hmm. she's really the longest. I would say I'm second longest. The one time we had done a broadcast from where you uh -huh. folks were up off of Exit 16, yep, uh -huh. and I was uh, struck by how many former educators were your volunteers now. Yes, um, they are an amazing source um, that volunteer for us. Um, I mean, that's just the heart of teachers. They want to keep giving back. They're still looking out for the kids even when they retire. Um, and I mean, I think it's, I mean, they're great people, but they saw the need directly and they saw who it helped. So we get a lot of former educators and former school staff who are retired looking for something to do and they come volunteer with us and it's mm -hmm. amazing yeah it is it's it, it's always mm -hmm. striking the bags that you're putting together are there any little christmas gifts in there and all this uh this time around uh we don't do that um there are several other organizations that do um there was one or two years back when we were much smaller there was only maybe 200 kids in the program we did that but we decided we want to stick with our mission which is food we are good at food and so we are going to focus on that and make the food better and then let other not, um, area nonprofits who focus on Christmas gifts and, and turkeys and the perishable food. And we're going to focus on what we do best. We did add the household goods, but we just felt like that just tied in. Um, With your so, mission. yeah, so yeah. that's our that's our um, that's our extra thing is the um, the non uh the household goods so it it's not exciting but it's needed and i'm i haven't actually priced what that box would be if you bought it but that's got to be probably 50 to 100 dollars that families can use for other expenses or gifts over the holidays as well do you have stories of uh, families who are in the backpack program and then things improved for them and then they came back to volunteer actually yes one just uh, popped to mind um actually a student so um there was a volunteer that came I think it was last year and she mentioned to me that um she was like thank you for you know having me volunteer and she said i want to let you know that um i received the backpack program food bags when i was in high school and it really helped my family and i wanted to come here and give back so so we do hear those stories um occasionally um i think it happens more than we hear um but but there have been times um there have been um, parents who have come back and volunteered. Um, some have come and volunteered even while receiving the bags because they want to get involved. It really is a community effort, and I think the community sees the need, wants to make sure the kids have the food at home. So it takes away that stress, it takes away the worry, and plus gives them the nourishment. So then when the kids are at school, they can be there, focus, learn, and um, become our future. So this is primarily a weekend program and then a holiday program. Not to go back to ugly times, but what was the challenge during COVID when everything was closed? Was this a daily program? So what we did for COVID, um, that was, I mean, we didn't know how long it would be, what was going on. So what we did is we did a drive-through program because we were you know, worried, didn't know how COVID spread mm -hmm. at the time. And we had a drive-through pickup. And we did that, I think, every week. So we didn't do it daily, but we did so similar to what we do in the summer program where um, we'll do 
the food bags for the kids and that's more um, kid friendly food um, food kids can just open or pop in the microwave and then we also did the family type food as well what we were stressing about was trying to get the food we needed into our facility because there was um, you know it the, it distribution was difficult there so that was our stress luckily we were able to get a jump on it we had already prepared for spring break bags so we had a lot of that extra food in our facilities is ready um, and i remember we were actually at aldi picking up like a thousand boxes of cereal there was like five cars there when we got the news that schools would be closing so we were so we were grateful we were able to get that food in before stores kind of shut down and, and weren't getting the new truckloads in and um 10 seconds lisa yep so it, it was a crazy time but then again uh the community came together local businesses it was um we got it done stay there when we come back for the final uh, 50 seconds you can tell folks how to make a donation thank you it's the big valley theme playing us out linda evans 